Our guest today is Don Miller. Don, how are you, sir? I am wonderful, David Giard. It is a pleasure to be here. I know, it's been many years since you've been on my show. It's excited to have you back. And uh, what have you been doing with yourself? Uh, you know, I've been uh, um, I've been golfing a lot. Is uh, yeah. is that where it counts? You know, it's been summer. Uh, we've had nice weather on, in Ohio, so it's been it's been really good. But uh, uh, doing uh, uh, more on the marketing side of things. So, uh, which is uh, you know, I've been a developer for most of my life, but uh, it is kind of neat to to see. Probably the last you know three or four years been kind of on the marketing side of things, which has been been cool as well. How about you, you sir? Uh, I've been doing this, oh. what you're seeing right now. <laughs> <laughs> I've been watching technology and friends for sure. So. <laughs> Thank you. I'm glad somebody's watching it. <laughs> uh, uh, tell me, you were telling me something about uh, a phrase I hadn't heard before. Headless CMSs. In fact, you did a talk uh, when I last saw you in Lincoln, Nebraska. You were talking about that. What, what's a headless CMS? Yeah, so um, so headless CMS is, in our case, uh, I use mostly what we call a headless WordPress. Uh, headless CMS is CMS's content management system. So the problem we have is um, you, if we're building a website that's got blog and other content that we're, we're adding on the site all the time, you don't want a developer just maintaining all that at all times. So, so what we do is uh, uh, we build a website um, that actually is a custom developed website that actually taps into the data in that content management system in, in this case, uh, WordPress, um, but there are many many different CMSs that you can do. So this this uh, you know is kind of a generic concept. So what it does is basically allows uh, non-developers to maintain content, and then uh, you know on the front end the developer is displaying the content. So it's uh, and everything's running quick and nice and using the latest technology usually. Uh, it doesn't have to be, but most of the time, the headless part is built with some kind of JavaScript library. Um, okay. that, you know, makes it render fast or maybe rendering to static pages, you know, things like that. Well, how is it different from what WordPress does natively, where uh, a non-developer certainly can use WordPress and go into the WYSIWYG editor and write their blog post and click save, and there it is. Is it, um, how is this system different from the default WordPress system or any CMS? Yeah, so one of the problems uh, that happened probably with Google's algorithm change um, in uh, 2021 was they, they have these things called, it's called Core Web Vitals. And it, Google's always worried about the user experience. And one of the things they want um, is they want to have your um, page load up on a mobile device like in a second. Okay. And so, the, so now, if I'm a non-developer, I go start a WordPress instance. I may use a plugin called Elementor, which is completely WYSIWYG, and uh, you know I can drag over my screens, build my my theme, and just you know go crazy and not write one piece of code, which is you know sometimes extremely convenient because if you're you know launching some new product you know personally or something, and you just want to get a nice website out there, it'll work great. Um, and, uh, and you don't have to do a lick of code to do any of that. But the problem has is like if you're a bigger company and you're, wor you're worried about things like organic traffic through SEO and, um, or you're doing paid advertising or, or all these things that where Google does matter, then it becomes, it becomes a, a little bit of a problem because what happens is that elementary plugin that you have has got a bunch of code generated for that page. So now, on a mobile device, it's really difficult to get that page to render in a second. You know, it's you know you have to do some serious optimization to get it to work. So basically, the the blog engine itself is running code at load time. When I every time somebody views the page, it's got to run some stuff and load some things, and it's that overhead that's slowing it down, right? Uh, well, the overhead is actually the library that's rendering the information that's pulling. Uh, okay. So it's it's got to load that library every time that. Oh yeah, uh, reading from a database is always a slow thing as well. Yep, yep, yeah. absolutely. So what are, are you are you pre-rendering these pages then before the they get viewed by a user? 
Well, it's way more complicated than that, but uh, uh, not technically it's not, but, uh, but the things that are happening, uh, there's a lot more tools that are involved. So, uh, so like using, uh, there are many, many different flavors. And when I was out in Lincoln, when I saw you, well, we, we were presenting, hey, this is our recipe for a headless CMS, you know, a headless WordPress. Uh, there's probably a thousand different ways to do this easily. Um, so what we did is we had the WordPress, which is we're basically just using it as a database in a backend administrative you know portal that you know 80% of websites today are built on WordPress. So uh, most people are are familiar with that platform in the background. So what happens is on the front end we use like GraphQL. Uh, so so there's two ways to get the data from WordPress. You use GraphQL or you can use a REST API. And it's basically going and grabbing that data. Um, so like if your home page, it's pulling your images from a usually a cache source, you know, um, not to throw a bunch of other things in here, but you know, we use Netlify on the front that has, you know, usually a content delivery network like Cloudflare as well. Okay. So all this stuff is kind of being cached, you know, unless it's changed, and then it grabs all that data and then and, and displays it. So we use uh, we use Node.js or I'm sorry Next.js, uh, which is a uh, library for you know basically React, and, um, and what this what this does is it allows us to uh, to actually grab all that data and just create a static page and then that's what's cached, and then and then that's cached until something changes on that page. So oh. so now you don't have this database call that's happening all the time. You know, Got it. So there's a database call, but it happens earlier. It doesn't happen when I when I when I, I the user click the link and open up your web page. It's already happened. It's already been rendered. Yep. Correct. When, when does it happen? Does it happen as soon as I save my blog post? As soon as you saw uh, it's 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 uh, as soon as you save your blog post, what happens is now the cache engine will go and and render the page, and so that's when it's it's building that static page in, in Netlify then. Got so. it. Interesting. But uh, okay. Go so I mean, so one of the things it does is it also solves if anybody that's a developer is worked on WordPress. I mean, there's there's no software development you know life cycle here. You know, there's you know you, you have like if I'm using Elementor, there's not really any code, so everything is actually in our WordPress database. Whereas now, um, like if I want to tweak some things on the page on my homepage. Uh, you know, I modify some CSS, all that, all that stuff is now stored in GitHub, which uh -huh. that master goes to Netlify, you know what I mean? So it's actually publishing our code, um, you know, to Netlify as well, so. That sounds a lot safer. If you accidentally make a mistake and you want to roll back that change, that's a, that's a huge benefit. Exactly, or, you know, you've changed developers or something in the middle of it, it's like, man, I have no idea what Bob did. You know, we're doing, you know, normal Git, uh, you know, the, the Git process where, you know, I'm doing a pull request for everything I changed. So four months ago when everything went to hell, uh, we didn't know it until today is because, uh, <laughs> you know, we can go back and see, oh, hey, this pull request right here, this is this is the problem. So uh, it, helps, it helps with the diagnosis. It helps, like for, you would, helps for assigning blame. <laughs> exactly, yeah. Which is probably me, so. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, here it is, uh, June 16th, <laughs> Don Miller. What the heck was he thinking? <laughs> exactly. Uh, cool. So, uh, so are you? A lot of this sounds custom. You've, you've got developers in house that are building this uh, engine, which is reading the WordPress database by, via these APIs, the REST APIs or GraphQL calls, and then they're taking that data and they're they're using that to render web pages. Is that is that true? Is that that's all custom code that your company has written, right? Correct. Okay. Correct. Yeah, so, and actually that was one of the larger challenges because, uh, you know, I always say there's a distinction, there's a WordPress developer and then there's a developer, and these are two different skill sets. So okay. it was quite the challenge to bring our existing WordPress developers over to, all right, well now, you know, now we're diving into code a lot more than we were before. So uh, we didn't use Elementor so much. So, so, you know, these developers did a lot of CSS and a lot of PHP, but now, oh. now they're JavaScript developers. So, you know, very front-end developers. Yeah, so. it's de definitely a different paradigm. Y exactly. Is this uh, approach have any effect on the security of your sites? Uh, yes, so 
I mentioned earlier about the caching. So one of the, the caching engines we use, uh, it's uh, called CDN, uh, a Content Delivery Network. Sure. Um, what we use is uh, a product called Cloudflare. There, there are other products. It's probably by far the, the most, most uh, utilized one. Uh, but what's really awesome about the security of this is um, I would never, ever say unhackable. <laughs> Please, I'm not challenging, especially the development, the, uh, the development crowd that you have listening to this. I, I'm not, this is not a challenge. Uh, yeah. No, but uh, uh, one of the things uh, that's great with Cloudflare is it basically takes it. So if I'm in, uh, if I'm in France, if I'm in Paris, France, and I'm pulling up a website, that's hosted, you know, I built in Detroit, Michigan. Um, maybe my base server is actually in Detroit. Um, what happens is a copy of that website, that, that everything cached, everything static is actually copied throughout the world. So if I'm in Paris and I call the website, now I just brought a copy to Paris at, at the hub there. So now, I'm not going all the way to Detroit from France right. to get the copy I'm doing there. Now, and you're like, what does this have to do with security? It does have something to do with security, Mr. Gerard. So thank you for the question. It has, uh, so if I go and try to hack that website and I'm hacking it at the, stat, you know, the cache version, there's nothing behind it. So I'm not accessing the server. I'm not hitting the database because everything's already rendered. It's basically a static website that's a copy from right. somewhere else, so it's not even the original. So that's that's where the security. So not only is it faster, but it's it's actually uh, 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 is, is great, especially if you have DD, uh, DDoS attack. You know they're they're hitting this you know the static uh, the static page. Uh, right. So it's not even actually the server that you're hitting. It sounds that more scalable sense. as well if you're uh, hitting these nodes all over the world and just hitting, uh, scalable sites and not have to run code on your central server. It sounds Correct. Like yeah, it's it's way more it's way more scalable. Um, uh, it's, yeah, you, 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 it's I, again I don't want to say limitless, but, but it, um. <laughs> uh, the way I just heard it described this one time is uh, it, it's you, you don't have to make it your your data completely one hundred percent secure. You just have to make it more expensive for someone to steal the data than uh, than the data itself is worth. That's really the goal. Oh wow, yeah, that's uh, that's great. I've never heard that. So that's, uh, if you've got, let's say you have a thousand dollars worth of data and it costs them ten thousand dollars to hack into it, that's that's pretty good deterrent right there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Even though it's that's, not one hundred percent secure. That's great. Uh, it seems to me you could use this to um, uh, render different views of your site off the same data, maybe either for I don't know, red blue testing or maybe different sites for different audiences. Or uh, do you ever do something like that? Yeah, so, um, so the, I mentioned earlier that we use Netlify. So one of the things that's, that's uh, we, we could do the, the different testing, but what's even more important than that is um, testing our new future. Hey, we wanna, you know, we're gonna change this page completely. So because of the, the, the uh, development lifecycle that we have with Netlify, I, we can go make those changes and then we, we create a pull request and what we do when we pull that, do a pull request, it actually creates, Nellify actually has a preview of what this website will look like. So it gives me like some random crazy URL and I'll go to that URL and, that, and then I can actually, I can actually just, uh, this is what the site looks like. And I can send it to, you know, you know, to my clients so they can say, oh, hey, this, yeah, this is exactly what I want. They approve it. We have, you know, we merge the pull request. It goes into the master branch and it pushes live. So. Um, but yes, and, and, and that allows us, of course, we can do, you know, A-B testing, um, you know, if, you know, to be a little bit more strategic from a marketing standpoint, we, we can do that as well. We don't do that as much just because it's a lot of work. All right. Um, uh, is it, uh, where would somebody go if they want to learn more about this? Um, about this being headless? Headless C. MSs. What's yeah. the what's the go? Uh, uh, I'm assuming there's a lot of people watching this that have never even heard that term before. Yes, uh, I would. Uh, in hopefully you can put this in your show notes. But uh, the, the, uh, there's a blog article on Netlify that okay. actually has um, uh, basically gives you the complete rundown of um, of headless CMS because it is 
I always I always try to tell people it is custom development on one end, and then on the other end, basically it's a database, uh, which it can be WordPress. I know Agile CMS has a really good one. Uh, WP Engine has been you know working on this you know uh, WP Engine's a WordPress you know hosting provider. They've been working on yeah, like Headless is uh, not new, but uh, it's just you know it's not adopted nearly as much. Are there any people that are just prepackaging this uh, this concept so that they can just tap into pre-rendered pages from a WordPress database and not hire custom developers? Is that a thing? Um, I'm sure that's a thing. I don't know of any okay. though. But your, com uh, your company is not. You're building yeah. custom stuff for your clients. Yep. Yep. We build we build custom. I mean, we're usually solving the problem of of having something that looks nice and is fast and you know you know we're a marketing agency so uh, you know we're, we're it's important for us to make sure that it's a great user experience makes sense is there anything we haven't talked about we should have oh i'm sure there is um on this topic i, I mean <laughs> <laughs> oh oh uh, I, you, uh, you, didn't, I, you didn't specify you didn't you, specify are you doing any speaking <laughs> coming up having this uh well, I, we just uh, we've submitted to CodeMash. That's that's one of my favorite conferences. Um, uh, um, I you know, so hopefully I have uh, hopefully I, uh, we get selected there. But uh, um, we've uh, I think we've submitted to uh, next JS conference, which is mm -hmm. in October. Um, but we'll do uh, we'll do some more uh, some more next year. Um, yeah. The one thing is, it's kind of such a niche thing. It's almost, uh, uh, it's you know, hard to, you know, sometimes we'll run into a problem. It's like, oh, this is a great developer problem to talk about. So sometimes we run out of content of, oh, what the heck, what can we talk about? So, uh, but in this case, there, it is very. I mean, there's probably about a dozen talks that you could do just around headless, just because. But the, but the, but it's they're worthless until people start using headless. So. <laughs> We have five people come to the talk and they're like, what is headless? So it's usually four of the five people don't even know what the heck headless is. So. Uh, well, I find it interesting that there's a, a thing out there that I didn't know about. And I just learned a little bit more about that today. So thank you, Don. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Thanks you for stay, having me. And you stay safe. David, uh, who needs who needs friends when you have technology? <laughs>